I paid 19 Australian or 12 US dollars for this AMD Radeon R7 250 OEM graphics card. It is low profile so it's perfect for a small form factor machine. Let's have a look what it can do. The GPU has 384 shaders, 28 nanometers and is from the graphics core next first generation. The clock speed is 1000 MHz with a boost of 1050 MHz. In games however it doesn't boost too often, I have a video footage here. If you want better performance we will later manually overclock this card. In terms of memory this card has 2GB of VRAM which is nice, it means in games you can select higher textures and details. It is GDDR3 running at 1000 MHz and connected with a 128 bit interface. The interface is PCI Express Gen 3 and it uses 8 lanes so that means to get the maximum performance you need at least a computer from the IV Bridge generation. We have DisplayPort that one can do 4K60 and DVI which can do 1080p60. I'm testing with Windows 10 and you have a choice of two drivers. You can go with the 22.6.1 Adrenaline drivers or use the 21.Q1.2 Radeon Pro drivers. The Radeon Pro drivers, they are more geared towards content creation and stability and have been tested with a wide range of applications. Let's dive straight into testing some games. We have Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 720p with the lowest details. Now, this uses the DirectX 12 API and we're getting under 30 FPS. However, if I test the same game with the DirectX 11 API, we're getting better performance. And this is because although this GPU supports DirectX 12, it only supports the feature level 11 1. So in many games it will perform better or uh, be more compatible with DirectX 11. It supports the Vulkan API. Here we have Strange Brigade running at 720p with low details and it's not silky smooth but it is still playable. 720p can look a little bit blurry on a high resolution display. Luckily this card does support integer scaling. It's an option you can activate in the drivers and that makes the pixels sharper and clearer when running games and content at lower resolutions. You asked me to test GTA 5 and here we go. This is right at the beginning of the game, 720p, all the details set to the lowest options and yeah, it seems to run well. I didn't get too far in the game, uh, maybe in future videos once I get past the beginning of this mission. This is Prey, also running at 720p with the lowest details and also seems to be quite playable. Modern games will definitely struggle on this graphics card. If you want to play games, you're probably better off playing older games. Here we have the uh, original Tomb Raider running at 720p and here we're getting over 100 FPS. So I tested the game again and running at 1080p with the lowest details just under 60 FPS, so that is actually pretty playable. Dirt 3 is an even older game. Here we have the game running at 1080p with medium details and it will run at around 60 FPS most of the time, so that is really nice to see. And if you're testing something like Portal, you can run that at 1080p with maximum details and it is silky smooth. What about overclocking? Well, the GPU is built on a 28 nanometer process and there is plenty of room for overclocking. You go into the drivers and we're maxing out the core from 1000 to 1100 megahertz and we're also overclocking the RAM from 1000 to 1200 megahertz and let's run some benchmarks. Stock, we're getting 49 FPS in the Tomb Raider benchmark and that increases to 57 FPS in the same Tomb Raider benchmark, so that's a nice performance boost. The card is also compatible with Windows XP, so it's perfect for turning a small form factor machine into a Windows XP retro gaming PC. You need the Catalyst 14.4 Pack 2 drivers, and when you install them, you will get a failure to do with the driver, but it installs the Catalyst Control Center and the HDMI audio, and then you reboot the machine, go into the device manager, and you manually load the driver. 
let's run some benchmarks. First, we have 3D Mark 2001 SE. We're getting over 42,000 in 03. We're getting over 36,000. And in 05, we're getting over 18,000. Let's test some games. Here we have Far Cry. You can see the FPS and also resolution scaling. So this game is playable even at 1600 by 1200. Same goes for Half-Life 2. We're getting 167 FPS at 1600 by 1200. Doom 3 also runs perfectly fine at 1600 by 1200. And here we have Fear, same thing. At 1600 by 1200, we're getting 92 FPS. And you can also go into the options and enable soft shadows. Then the game is more demanding. And even here at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 57 FPS. So this video card is terrific for Windows XP retro gaming. What about using this video card for a media center? It supports the Unified Video Decoder 4.0. Unfortunately, the best it can do is H.264 at 1080p 60. It has no support for H.265, VP9, AV1, no 10-bit colors. So it's fairly uh, stock standard. But if you're building a 1080p Media Center PC and your content uses the H.264 codec, then this video card will do all the acceleration on the GPU. I installed OBS to check if there's a video encoder. Unfortunately, this video card doesn't seem to have one. The only option we're getting is using the CPU for software encoding. So for the price, I think we can't complain. There's enough to really like about this video card. It does have two gigabytes of VRAM, which is nice. It means you can try some of the higher texture settings and especially older games will run really well on this video card. If you like videos about low profile video cards, I have more. I'll put them on the screen for you to click on. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.